Hi, I'm NHS Vice President Jason Kuhn, and I'm here with the Honorable Mayor Richard Rivnack, who was just in inducted into the Hall of Fame class for the Distinguished Alumni. Mr. Rivnack, how are you today? Great. I couldn't do better. That's good. How did your college experience impact your future career and make you the person you are today? Well, I think at college what it did, it taught me not so much the book smart stuff, but more about uh, setting priorities, keeping focus, uh, organizational skills, and uh, it allowed me to get involved into organizations uh, where I could serve in a leadership capacity. Uh, I went to Clarion University and I was president of my fraternity and I was on the president's advisory council. So it, it really allowed you not so, you know, to really get into areas where maybe you didn't have that opportunity um, uh, previously. So I think it, you know, it's more, I always say college is more valuable for the experience. Uh, than the academics and I'm not trying to downplay the academics because I think they're certainly the most important part but for me I learned how to manage my time I learned how to be a leader I learned how to keep my values because I mean you're dealing with folks from a lot of different cultures and who may not share your values um, and to remain focused on what's important to you um, it's a challenge but uh, it's some of the best times of your life as well it definitely sounds like a valuable education for you how would you compare your experience working as the Director of Human Resources under UPMC with your position as the Mayor of Plum? Well, I think in both positions, um, you're, you're forced to make very difficult decisions at times, and uh, sometimes they're unpopular, sometimes they're very popular. Um, but, you know, I have a, a three-question rule that I try to use throughout the course of my life, and I always uh, I ask, is it fair, is it consistent, and is it ethical? Um, and normally, if you can answer yes to those three questions, I've always found that, that you make the right decisions. Uh, I use it at work in dealing in human resources because you have to be very uh, fair, consistent, and ethical. And then certainly as a mayor, I mean, as somebody who is speaking on behalf of the community and trying to do the right thing, the, qu the questions are, are as germane there as they are in the business environment. So um, fair, consistent, and ethical is really what I try to, to to ground my belief system around. Those are definitely good values to have, especially you've definitely done a good job of merging the two careers. <laughs> what inspired you to work for the government? Well, you know, my parents um, really are a great influence on me, and, and I think I, I talked about it in my speech last night, and one of the things that I said is that, you know, they always stressed me three things, God, family, and community, in that order. and. Um, they, my mom and dad always used to say, look, we're very blessed and that we have, um, we have a lot. And when you're in positions like that, it's your responsibility to, uh, to give back to the community. Um, the old, you're our brother's keeper type of uh, adage. And uh, it's kind of weird. My dad actually was involved in local government um, years ago. Uh, in the borough, he was uh, the vice chairman of the Democratic Party. We, he was the chairman of the Planning Commission. And uh, growing up, I saw that, I guess, and uh, I said, oh, that's pretty neat. You can give back to the community. And it's very personal because, you know, this is the town that you live in. You know the people that you're dealing with, and you can see the impact uh, pretty clearly. Um, so after I got out of college, um, I, I worked uh, on some campaigns, and uh, it was something that I, that I found that was very um, rewarding, something that uh, I really did feel that you could give back and and help the community. And uh, I was a councilman for a while. I actually started off, uh, Mayor Francie appointed me and his, his uh, council appointed me to the zoning hearing board. And uh, I was on there for several years and then I was appointed to the Civil Service Commission which deals with uh, the hiring of police and other civil service areas. Um, and uh, then I uh, stepped out of politics for quite some time and about 12 years ago, somebody said, hey, we'd really like for you to get back involved again, and, and I did. I uh, never thought I would again, um, but y you know what? I've really enjoyed the last 10 years as mayor. Uh, I ran, and I was blessed that the people you know, voted for me, and, um, and I think we've gotten a lot accomplished over the last uh, 10 years, and I think uh, we have a, a good working relationship, a professional working relationship down at the borough, and uh, hopefully that'll continue throughout the remainder of this term, that's for sure. Yeah, it's definitely been interesting to see Plum progress over the past 10 years, so we thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for, thank you for residents. Not me, they've done it. No.
Can you explain your involvement in the Toys for Tots program? Yeah, going back to community service, I have a 10-year-old son, Richie, who is really the light of my life. Um, and uh, my wife and I, and actually I have to give credit to my wife more so even than me in this, you know, we were talking about we wanted to instill those values about you know, faith and community into our son. And when he turned two, uh, she came up with the idea. She said, let's have a Christmas party and invite our family and friends and um, collect toys for the less fortunate. And we had it at Retton Fire Hall. We only had maybe, oh, I don't know, 100 people come. It was mostly just family, honestly, and some close friends. And it was great. We got so m many folks come in, and we raised you know, you know, so much awareness of, of the Toys for Tots and collected so many toys for those folks that were less fortunate that the next year we started talking. We said, heck, we should try to make this a little bit bigger um, and help these kids out. And uh, so it kept growing and growing and growing and growing, and it was our way of teaching our son to understand that he has a responsibility to help those less fortunate. And we've actually expanded it to um, include the Plum Food Pantry. So we collect both for Toys for Tots and the Plum Food Pantry, and we have it at Boyce Park Ski Lodge, and uh, we have about 500 plus people that, that come every year. We get truckloads of toys and food. Um, uh, it's actually one of the best things that I think you know, that we do as a family. We do it all together. My son works on it, I work on it, my wife, my sister-in-law, my sister, my mom, my mother-in-law, everybody's involved in it now. We kind of drag them all in. And uh, it's just a wonderful way to kick off uh, the Christmas season and, uh, and hopefully continue to teach our son that message that, uh, that we are our brother's keepers. Yeah, that's great for the community, especially seeing this charity develop overall and also for your son to be able to see this influence. Do you see Plum as having an increased retail and restaurant presence within the next 10 to 20 years? That's my hope. Um, one of the things that I think that we really have to do here in Plum is we have a wonderful community. We're extremely large, though. We're 29 square miles. Uh, actually, we're the second largest borough size-wise in the state. And... Uh, we have about 30, 31,000 residents, but we have a tremendous opportunity to develop commercial land here. Um, one of the things that I've said for the last 10 years since being mayor is that I really would like to develop the current borough property uh, into some sort of tax generating, revenue generating uh, space. Uh, um, it's probably m best suited for retail development. Um, but and we're looking actually now in uh, exploring that pretty pretty aggressively. We have RFPs out there from uh, an outside vendor to to take a look at it and do an assessment on it. Um, but the problem with Plum is is unless we grow that uh, that commercial base, uh, our expenses continue to go up. And uh, while I don't have taxing authority as mayor, that's that's on the on the side of the council. I think it's really important for us to look at alternative revenue sources. Um, I think the residents already pay uh, uh, their more than their fair share in taxes, and I think it's up to us as civic leaders on both the council and the school board to encourage uh, commercial and retail development so that we can get that revenue from some source other than the homeowners. So uh, my goal is yes, and you know, God willing, if I'm able to see it through, I'm going to continue to to make the argument for that, and hopefully we'll have that develop someday. Soon. Yeah, yeah uh, it's definitely nice to see different businesses on 286 and stuff like that, but it would be very cool to see other businesses develop throughout the rest of the yeah. borough. And if you look at where we're developing now, most of the residential development is taking place from the borough building towards the East Oakmont area, towards the 909 corridor. Um, and, you know, we're underserved. I mean, I always say you can count the amount of gas stations on one hand that we have in Plum, and uh, really what we have one supermarket. And Plum Borough, for the second largest borough in the state, uh, state of Pennsylvania, uh, I think our residents deserve uh, better services, uh, and I think uh, developing commercially would be uh, one way to accomplish that. Of course, I'm open to any other suggestions that any resident would have because I, I don't, I don't claim to have the market on all the good ideas, uh, but uh, I think this certainly is one that is doable, sustainable. It won't impact the residential life that much of the community, and I think it can increase the revenue that we have. Do you have any advice for people interested in pursuing leadership positions? Um, I think it, it begins now. I think it begins in high school. Um, 
you know, folks like yourself who are involved in different organizations that uh, not only join a club, but join a club and then take a, a, an active part in that club. Um, you know, leadership, I think, is it's th you know, it courage isn't being not, not being afraid. Cur and I don't know who said this, so I'm not trying to take credit for it. Courage isn't not being afraid. It's just doing something I I without uh, fear of failing. And I think that that you know, put yourself in those positions where you can serve as a leader. Step up. Take on additional responsibilities. Plum High School provided a great. Um, launch pad for me in terms of leadership. I was involved in student government, uh, the DECA club here, uh, I was on the newspaper staff and a lot of other clubs. So it was uh, in sports um, th and, I, and I think it really, really helped focus me on, yeah, I, I, I want to be part of the solution. I want to be driving change. I want to do the right thing. And the only way you can really do that is to not just be a, a member of the club, uh, but all to try to get into a leadership position. And again, I'm not downplaying folks that are members of clubs because I think they're very important too because uh, um, you know, I have an old saying in business and, and even in uh, particularly in business is I don't claim to be the smartest person in the world, but I know how to surround myself with people that are. And uh, they make your life a lot easier if you do that. So well, That's great advice to have, especially for high school students nowadays. They sometimes lack the motivation to get involved with stuff and they just need the extra... I guess influence to get involved and pursue leadership positions. It's so fun. it's yeah. fun when you get into it. I mean, uh, don't don't sell it short. There's a lot of enjoyment that you gain from being in those positions. All right. I guess on a more casual note, yeah. I heard you're a pretty big baseball fan. So what are your predictions for this pirate season? I think this is the year. I think there is a uh, uh, division uh, title in the works. Um, we'll see how if the the pitching holds out and Kutch's health gets a little bit better. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a dying a wool pirate fan. I went to opening day again this year. Um, I try to get to as many games as possible. I was a former season ticket holder up until this year. Uh, we're a small pack, 20 game pack, but uh, uh, I think it's the year. I think we have good pitching. We have good young talent, uh, arguably the best outfield in baseball. Uh, and uh, I think that we have the arms to get us there. So we'll see. We'll see. But I'm, I'm a pirate fan. I have to be cautiously optimistic. That's good to have optimism. All right, I want to thank you, Mr. Hrivnak, for your time today, and I want to say good luck in your future endeavors. Oh, thank you.